Happy Memorial Day here to everyone listening on WUB Network, America's Sports Leader. I'm Eddie Kalegi, welcoming you to an MLB doubleheader Memorial Day edition. We'll start with the Subway Series. Starting in just a couple minutes, the Mets and the Yankees squaring off. Yankees at 30-20, and 20, Mets at 33-17. and 17, Both really strong power, powers in their respective leagues this season. After that, we'll have the Beltway battle. The Orioles and the Nationals, Chris Tillman and Strasburg, the expected pitchers in that one. Yankees and Mets will be Syndergaard against Masahiro Tanaka. We're going to take a look at your AL and NL standings. The NL, the Mets atop the board at 33 and 17. Nationals even with them in their division, but the Nationals get the wild card. Second spot, the Diamondbacks at 31 and 19 leading the West. The Cubs would get the three seed 27 and 23 leading the NL Central, Nats and Dodgers, the two wild card spots, the Braves, Cardinals, and Rockies, all in shouting distance. The American League, the Seattle Mariners, who we saw the last time we played Monster Energy Saturday afternoon baseball here on WUB Network, they were 25 and six. They've come back to the pack, going just seven and 12 over their last 19, dropping to 32 and 18 on the year. The Orioles tied with them, with the Yankees two games back, the Indians four back. Tigers four and a half back. How does that all work out? The Mariners one seed. The Orioles would be two. The Indians leading the Central would be the three seed. It would be the Yankees and Tigers from Yankee Stadium right now being the wild card game with Tampa, Toronto, the White Sox, Oakland, Kansas City, and Texas all within four, four and a half games of the postseason right now. So these two teams have been really strong this year, the Yankees and the Mets. Both have been teams that you definitely wouldn't want to mess with. But they both have had their share of struggles this season. The Yankees have dealt with injuries. That has been a problem that has really hurt them all season. But things have taken a turn for the better because they are getting two starting pitchers back. Michael Pineda, who has an ERA of just 088 in six starts this year and a 4-0 record, had not pitched since Cinco de Mayo where he went eight and two-thirds innings and ended up with a sore arm and had elbow inflammation and went on the sable list. He'll be back in this series. He's supposed to start on Wednesday. And tomorrow, they get another pitcher back. Luis Severino, who's been out since April 21st with a blister, is going to return. So this Yankees rotation really bolstered. And that's defi- that pair of Severino and Pineda definitely makes this rotation look better than having Chasen Shreve and Luis Sessa in there. The Mets, they've had a couple injuries. Curtis Granderson was banged up earlier in the year. Jose Reyes, of course. David Wright, Seth Lugo have both been gone for the long term. Steven Matz was hurt, but he is going to be back this series. A lot of starting pitchers coming back right now. There haven't been a lot of injuries over the last couple weeks, but there have been a lot of guys coming back from injury, especially on these two teams. Noah Syndergaard takes the hill. Syndergaard and Tanaka, the two starters today, have both struggled recently. Tanaka's ERA dropping to 6-9-1, really not proving to be in that ace role that everyone expected him to be in, which has really been a big disappointment for this entire organization. But now that they're getting Pineda back, CeCe's been really strong this year. Pineda, CeCe, Luis Severino, things are going to make take a much better turn over the next couple weeks, I think. The Mets' Noah Syndergaard, also supposed to be an ace, but ever since he had that game against the Dodgers where he got thrown out of the game for hitting a bunch of batters and really a hitting duel between the two teams, he's really fallen apart and is... Had a couple bad starts. The last one against uh, uh, Cincinnati, he only pitched four innings, throwing 96 pitches. But anyway, we're just about ready to start this Subway Series game on Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day to all of you. The Yankees switching up their lineup, playing an interleague ball game. This is only their second road interleague series. They've got a couple more coming up in a few weeks. They go to San Diego and they go to the Dodgers in the next couple weeks. So Tanaka versus Syndergaard. We are just about ready here on WUB Network for the start of this battle between 
the New York Mets, and the New York Yankees, the Subway Series, right here on WUB Network, America's Sports Leader. It's a beautiful day from City Field. It rained a little earlier, but now things are looking much better. The sky is opening up, and we're expecting some sun later in the day as we welcome you here to WUB Network's presentation of Memorial Day Baseball. It's the Subway Series, followed by the Beltway Battle, and we also might end up having a game in the uh, L.A. Dodger Angels series. It's all the interleague matchups uh, this Memorial Day. Second straight year they've done this, bringing it back from 2012 and 2013. You play your interleague rival during Memorial Day week, that Monday through Thursday, a four game set, a home and home series. And the Yankees and Mets about to start. Noah Syndergaard on the hill, 4 and 2 with a 2.86 ERA. It was down in the ones, then went up near 4. Now he started to bring it back down. Can he continue on the right track today? A lot of walks this season. He's walked 20 in just nine starts. Yankee lineup, Jacoby Ellsbury leads it off. Brett Gardner bats second. Chase Headley third. Greg Bird cleans it up. Gary Sanchez bats fifth. Starlin Castro sixth. Aaron Judge, the judge, is in there in seventh. D.D. bats eighth. And Masahiro Tanaka brings up the rear of the batting order. Here's Jacoby Ellsbury, 277 mark on the season. Two for four with a double and a walk in yesterday's victory against Tampa Bay. Rene Rivera with the sign. He's pretty much Syndergaard's personal catcher. Calms him down in any time of issue. Both teams in their military camouflage uniforms. First pitch from Syndergaard outside ball one, and we are underway from flushing. Ellsbury, a high batting average, one of the many reasons the Yankees have been so strong this season, having someone like him and Brett Gardner and Matt Holiday, a lot of veterans mixed in with the youth on this team, making the Yankees a very good team. 1-0 paints the outside part of the play to strike, and a slider count is even 1-1. One one. So it was rainy earlier. We thought there'd be a rain delay, but the sun has started to come out. Still a lot of dark clouds, so we'll hope for the best. Syndergaard looks in for the sign from Rene Rivera. Here's the 1-1 one -one offer. Ellsbury grounds this one foul down the first base line. Syndergaard ahead one and two. The strikeout to walk ratio has not been good for Noah this year. 57 Ks, 20 walks, and Ellsbury lines one wide at Duda. He drops the ball at first base, and Ellsbury's going to get on. Oh, a horrible play right there from Lucas Duda. That one was lined directly at him. He should have been able to hang on to that ball, but somehow it just slipped right out of his glove. And he batted it down with his right hand, and he dropped it twice more, and he could not get the throw down. So the leadoff run around for the Yankees, and then I'll bring up Brett Gardner. And when you talk about guys who are hitting well, how about Brett? But first, let's look at the Met defense. Rivera, the catcher. Syndergaard, the pitcher. Reyes, Cabrera, Walker, and Duda around the diamond in the infield. Cespedes in left. Curtis Granderson, who's had some knee issues this season, going to get a day off in the wet conditions. Michael Conforto playing center field. Jay Bruce in right. Gardner stolen 10 bases this month, hitting 332. That 332 mark is near the tops of the American League. He has had such a strong year. Played in 48 games, so pretty much every game for him. But that's not the highest average on this team. Starlin Castro hitting 363, which is tops in the American League. Gerard Dyson's mixed in there. Couple guys. But they have two of the top five hitters. Yankees definitely a different ball club from last season. First pitch you hear foul off. Rivera the sign, the 0-1. Popped up, shallow center, long run Conforto. Coming in, still coming in. He'll make the nice running catch. Back to first, easily goes Ellsbury. And that's the first out of this game between the Yankees and the Mets. As we look this Wednesday... On ESPN, don't miss it, Wednesday Night Baseball, it's the Blue Jays and the Braves. Jose Batista, Matt Kemp, two veterans trying to lead their clubs who are right in the wild card race in their respective leagues. Blue Jays, Braves, this Wednesday here on WUB Network. So one out, and that will bring up Chase Headley. Headley, 274 mark in the year, nine homers, 49 rubies. He's also gotten some speed on the base paths, has stolen three bases in the last two games. 
as 1-0 is a pitch out, as they thought Ellsbury would be going. He's got a big lead due to trying to hold him back. 1-0, right down the middle, a slider at 90 miles an hour from Noah Syndergaard, 1-1. This is the second time we've seen Syndergaard here on WUB Network, back in opening day against the Padres, and he gave up a couple runs, but he also struck out nine in the Mets' opening day victory against the San Diego Padres. 1-1 fastball outside, 2-1. The sign from Rivera, the 2-1 pitch, misses low, and Syndergaard loose in control, 3-1. Like we were talking about, a strikeout-to-walk ratio has been really bad this year, under 3, which means for every three strikeouts, he's got at least a walk. 3-1, lined into right field, that's a base hit, falling quickly in front of Bruce. Ellsbury's going to try to go to third, now he holds back because Bruce got a handle on that ball and would have thrown him out by a mile, but now first and second with one out. So we look at the teams in the top five in Team ERA in the National League this season. Diamondbacks won, Nationals two. The Mets are third, Cubs and Phillies round out the top five. But you see the Mets, they don't have the best pitching staff. Jerry's Familia has been a very unreliable closer. Syndergaard struggled. Matt Harvey has had a terrible year. DeGrom's been strong. Wheeler's been strong. Mets just a lot of struggles this season. So this will bring up Greg Bird, 270 hitter this year. First pitch to Greg is lined off the foot of Syndergaard. He throws the second for one to first double play, and they'll get out of the inning. But now the concern is with Noah Syndergaard, who looked a little shaken up out of that ball lined right off of his foot by Greg Bird. This was not a chopper or anything. This one got him right in the foot on the line drive. Syndergaard recovered quickly. Whether he's shaken up or not, they'll probably look at him in the... Maybe he'll go down to the clubhouse before he has to pitch in the top half of the second. Cabrera grabbed it for one. Cabrera took a shot, too, because that was not the cleanest of slides. I think if he, if there had not been an out, they would have called this a double play anyway. Because this slide by, Ells, by uh, not Ellsbury, by Headley almost completely took out Cabrera. But he made the nice throw and got Greg Bird by a step at first, and that'll retire the side. So not the best of innings for the Mets. They give up a hit, an error, one left. We head to the bottom of the first. No score. It'll be the Mets' turn at the plate. Here on WUB Network's presentation of Memorial Day Baseball. Remember next week, the final race before the All-Star break in the Progressive Cup Series. Don't miss it. It's the Irons 499 from Talladega. After Kyle Busch got his second win of the year at Bristol, he looks to continue his success at the restrictor plate track where Joe Gibbs Racing was strong back at Daytona, winning the Daytona Derby, the Microsoft Duel, and racking up three top fives in the Daytona 500. Will their con success continue at Talladega? Will Daytona 500 winner Brad Keselowski continue his restrictor plate success? All that and more in the Aaron's 499 next weekend right here on WUB Network, America's sports leader. Here's Jose Reyes leading off against Masahiro Tanaka. And as we talked about Tanaka this season, it has not been too strong. A 6-9-1 ERA, just a 1-4 record, just one win in 10 starts. Definitely not the stats he wants. 34 strikeouts, 22 walks. When you have... 15 more hits given up than strikeouts. That's definitely not what you want. He's given up as many runs as he has strikeouts this season. Tanaka has really taken a step back now in his third season out of Japan. He faces Jose Reyes, who missed 14 games being on the disabled list with a strained quad. And now he's back and healthy and ready to go at the plate. Tanaka's first pitch coming. Gary Sanchez behind the plate at catcher. Gets most of the time back there now. Swing and a miss by Reyes in the first pitch. Nice movement on the split change. Tanaka's most deceiving pitch. And it's an 0-1 count. Tanaka looks in. 0-1 pitch. Reyes grounds one down to third weekly. Nice fielding right there by Chase Headley, who fires to Bird, and that's the first out. You can hear some Let's Go Mets and Let's Go Yankees chants. A lot of people in pinstripes for both teams here today. Jose Reyes leads off in the meta order, then it's as Drupal Cabrera. Cespedes is Bruce, the two big power hitters, Neil Walker, Lucas Duda, Rene Rivera, Michael Conforto towards the back of the order, and Noah Syndergaard, who is having an incredible year with the bat, 421 average, 
two home runs, he's hit two moonshots, three ribbies. Nets have a lot of power at the bottom of that order with Conforto batting eighth so they can keep up the righty-lefty most of the way down the order. 323 mark for Conforto. So we look at the Yankee defense. Gary Sanchez catching, Tanaka pitching infield left to right, Headley at third, Castro at short, Didi Gregorius at second, Greg Bird at first, with Gardner, Ellsbury, and Aaron Judge in the outfield. You may be saying to yourself, is this the first time we've won a Yankee game this year? Why isn't Gregorius at short? That's his natural position. Well, Starlin Castro has gotten most of the time at short. He really wanted to be the starting shortstop this season, and look, he's got a 363 mark. Brian Cashman fears that if Girardi moves him to second and Gregorius back to short, that'll mess up Castro's bat. And I mean, Didi has not had a strong year with the bat. 209, just a couple home runs. So Tanaka now facing as Dribble Cabrera, who's had a strong year. 305 mark for the former Indian National and Tampa Bay Ray, and he takes the first pitch, a sinker out of the zone, 1-0. That pitch did the opposite of sinking. That one just kept rising up. We know the signals from Gary Sanchez. We can tell that was the sinker. He puts out that four, and that's always that deceiving pitch. 1-0, foul back behind the screen. Count is even, 1-1. One and one. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Cabrera. That one is in there, lower part of the zone. Looked a little low. That was the sinker, and that one worked well, one and two. Tanaka always gets calls on that sinker. That's one of the reasons why everyone likes that sinking pitch from him. One-two pitch. Cabrera grounds with a third. A lot of work for Headley early. He makes a move, throws to first, got him. Two ground outs to Chase Headley, and those are the first two outs of the game that Tanaka's gotten. As we look at the Mets rankings in the National League, and they are, they are the top in four rankings that are really important. They're the tops in batting average, tops in runs scored, tops in hits, and tops in on-base percentage. And they are second behind Arizona in batting average with runners in scoring positions, something they really struggled with last year. That's why the Mets definitely a factor this season. First pitch to Yoenna Cespedes has taken high, ball one on a fastball. Mets 33-17 and 17 mark on the year. The 1-0 pitch from Tanaka to Cespedes is lined, foul off to the right, count is even, 1-1. One one. Cespedes is hitting 312, having a solid year. But just eight homers two months into the year, everyone thinks that's a little low. And really, Jay Bruce has proven to be the better hitter. Jay Bruce, a higher average, has more homers, more ribbies, more extra base hits. They, have the, they each have 64 hits, though this season, and each have scored 34 runs. If you looked at that quick player comparison brought to you by the Motorsports guys, swing and a miss by Cespedes here, and now it's 1-2 and two on the fastball. Fast. Cespedes got to be careful. He's faced Tanaka his fair share of times before in these series, and also a couple years ago when Tanaka was brand new, and Cespedes was still in the AL. 1-2, swing and a miss. He got him. Nasty break on the split change, and Tanaka has this very solid first inning. Couple grand outs, and he strikes out Cespedes. We head to the second. Still no score. The Yankees youth, Sanchez, Castro, and Judge do up here. Here's Gary Sanchez, who's really cooled off has struck out in six of his last seven plate appearances. Went for the Golden Sombrero on Friday, 0 for 4, 4 strikeouts. They did not start him Saturday. It was Andrew Romine behind the plate. He came in as a pinch hitter and flew out almost a homer, but flew out to deep right. It was caught by Kevin Kiermeyer. And a couple more strikeouts yesterday before being subbed in by Andrew Romine. It's just a 188 mark this season for Gary Sanchez. Really not the same strength we saw at the beginning of last season when he came up. Has four homers, 32 hits, but really has cooled off this year. The complete opposite of Aaron Judge, who although Judge is only at a 229 mark, Judge has done pretty much everything for this team defensively and offensively. So Judge right now this season has been the much better player, even though it was the polar opposite at the end of last year, last August and September. First pitch foul back 0-1. Everyone thought the Yankees might cool off, but 0-1 to Sanchez, low outside on the pitch from Syndergaard, 1-1. But we're end of May now, so we're a third of the way through the season. 
And usually by late May is when you start finding out who is for real. 1-1 one, one to Sanchez, grounded up the middle to second. Walker plays it on a hop, throws to first, one away. And that'll bring up Starlin Castro. But the Yankees, they are not cooling off. As we look at the stats, they're third in hits and runs in the AL, third in average with runners in scoring position, also in the top five in batting average and triples. This team is just not cooling off. You got this great starting pitching, which is only going to get better now that Pineda and Severino are both healthy. And this team just keeps getting stronger and stronger, and the Yankees doesn't seem like they're going to go anywhere. And they're not under fire, really, from anybody. The, the American League, only seven of the 15 teams are above 500. In the National League, I believe there's eight, the way that's worked out. But Tampa Bay is, and Toronto are still a solid five or six games back. Red Sox are just in all kinds of trouble, and John Farrell is on the hot seat as they are uh, 12 games under 500 and last place in the division. Baltimore a little out of the Yankees' reach by now, but not too far. Yankees just two games back of Baltimore and the Seattle Mariners for the top spot in the American League. It's amazing how Seattle's come back to the pack. Here's Starlin Castro. Probably the best hitter right now in baseball. 363. He and Gerard Dyson are definitely the two best hitters in baseball right now. I mean, Gerard has not cooled off, although the rest of the Mariners have. He is still hitting 337, and a 12-game hitting streak just came to an end the other day, and he's already started a two-game hitting streak again. 1-0 taken by Castro down the middle on a fastball 1-1. One one. With Starlin and Gerard Dyson hitting so well, it was quite the shocker. 1-1 one one coming from Syndergaard, Rivera the sign. Castro fouls it off 1-2. There were people on social media calling for extra PED tests in both of them as they have both come out of nowhere, and they got them. They came back clean. They got both got tested twice in a span of a week when MLB came around May 1st to do all their testing, and then a couple people got suspended. Now 2-2 two -two count. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. In there, strike three called. Two away. A couple people got suspended, a relief pitcher for the Braves by the name of Chaz Rowe. Not really any big names, a couple in the minors. But a second drug test was called on for Gerard Dyson and Starlin Castro because they've just been so strong this year. Both came back clean, both didn't really make any comments about it. Order on the court, the judge is up. And the first pitch to number 99 from Syndergaard is a swing and a miss. Judge flailing at that curveball from Syndergaard at 85. We've noticed Syndergaard's velocity drop this season. It was really strong in April, but ever since May 1st came, he cannot really touch any higher than about 98. As a grounder up the middle, dive by Cabrera. Can he throw out Judge? And he does, and the nice little roller to first. Cabrera with the dive, and he gets the third out for Syndergaard. Syndergaard threw that inning 1-2-3, much easier than the first. We head to the bottom of the second, still scoreless in Flushing. Here's Jay Bruce. He hit a grand slam yesterday in yesterday's win against the Braves. It was a good game for the Mets. Zach Wheeler pitched really well, and they got the victory. Mets just keep grinding them out. They've had some strong games this year. They've had some struggles with issues with Harvey and Syndergaard pitching. But DeGrom and Wheeler have been the two reliable ones. And it's been really good. 1-0 splitter in there, strike one from Tanaka. That Wheeler's been good, coming back from Tommy John surgery, missing the last couple seasons. And now he is back and just as strong, maybe even stronger than he was before. 1-1 pulled down the right field line by Bruce, and his hot streak continues. That rolls all the way to the wall. Bruce goes to second. He's in easily with a stand-up double. And the Mets have an early runner in scoring position here in the second with Neil Walker coming to the plate. Tanaka, you know, sometimes that fastball, he can't really throw his fastball. It lapses. And he can throw something like that. And his problems, it's not, he doesn't give up big moon shots. He does not give up singles. He gives up, it's pull hitters like Jay Bruce that really hurt him. Guys who can hit line drive homers down either side or guys who can hit like like rolling doubles like that because he throws a pitch, a uh, backdoor fastball like that, and Jay Bruce can just pound it. And now Neil Walker, one of the four regular guys in the Met lineup 
who is hitting above 300 this season. He comes up with a runner in scoring position, and he's driven in 13 in his last nine games. You hear the plane fly over, and Walker grounds one up the middle, a base hit. And rounding third is Bruce. The throw home is going to be cut off by Castro. Jay Bruce scores back-to-back -back singles, back-to-back -back hits for the Mets off Tanaka to start the second, and they lead it 1-0. First pitch for Walker, a splitter that did not bottom out like most splitters do from Masahiro. And Jay Bruce was running on contact. And the throw from Ellsbury cut off by Castro. An RBI single by Walker, who's driven in 14 runs over the last 10 games. The Mets, geez, driving in runs. 35 for Walker, 43 for Bruce, 40 for Cespedes. I mean, a couple guys like Cabrera only have 19. But a lot of guys are really producing for this team. And now they're up 1-0, and Lucas Doodle will be the batter. You can hear the cheers. Duda, one for one, and stole a base in a double steal that worked to perfection yesterday against Armando Rivero and the Braves. First pitch of sinker in their strike one. Guys are playing off the bag, and out of all people, Lucas Duda and Travis Darno were able to pull off a double steal to get the second and third. 0-1 in their strike two on the sinker. Duda doesn't really agree with the call, but back to that. And after that, uh, pinch hitting Juan Lagares was able to drive in both the runs on a two-run single in the eighth inning to extend the Met lead. 0-2, Duda has trouble holding off those pitches in the dirt. Nearly went around there on the changeup in the dirt, 1-2. Walker at first, already a run home here in the bottom of the second for the Mets. 1-2 taken again by Duda. Another sinker in the dirt, 2-2. Two two. Tanaka really playing with him. He was ahead 0-2, had some pitches to play with, but now he's got to be careful as now it's a 2-2 two -two count. 2-2 two -two pitch to Duda. Line down to second. A dive by Gregorius. He throws to second to get the lead runner. I don't know how he had time to get that. Walker hesitated. I don't know why Walker hesitated running the bases when Gregorius dove for it, because he was able to throw him out, and they almost got the double play. Nice play, though, by Gregorius. That's the first out, and that'll put a slower runner in Duda at first base. So look at who's leading the National League in runs this season. The Mets, a 32-run advantage over the Rockies at 241. Then the Braves, Dodgers, and a tie between the D-backs and Cubs ran at the top five. Who you do not see up there are the Nationals. The Nationals have won an amazing 15 games this season. That's pretty much half their victories. By scoring three runs or less, they do not get a lot of runs. Bryce Harper only hitting, I think, 270 this year. Rendon and Daniel Murphy have been their two big hitters. Trey Turner having a good year as well. But they do not get a ton of runs. The Mets and Nationals are really polar opposites. The only things they have in common are issues in their bullpen and strong starting pitching. Their offenses are completely opposite. Which will make this battle as we get into this stretch of the season, the summer stretch. It's going to get really exciting. The Mets play the Nationals in a couple weeks in Washington. It's Rene Rivera, the batter. First pitch outside ball one. Rene not hitting too strong this year. It's just a 162 mark. Pretty much splitting time at catcher with Travis Darno, But Rivera clearly the better choice defensively. Sanchez calls for the pitch, the 1-0. Rivera pops one up. By the first base line, can anybody find it? Who's going to get it? And it's going to be Bird who makes the catch, and that's the second out. And staying at first is Lucas Duda. The sun was coming out, but now it's gone behind the dark clouds here at City Field, really hoping we don't get any sort of rain or precipitation at all. As they have turned on the lights right before the start of this bottom of the second inning which I think is going to throw off quite the glare, as Conforto lines went up the middle, past the diving Gregorius, and a base hit. The Mets, really, their main issue is that they have four outfielders. Curtis Granderson's been hurt a lot, and he's been the one who's been producing the least. But then there's games where he hits two home runs, and the Mets really don't know what to do between he and Conforto, because you know Cespedes and Bruce aren't going anywhere. That position at center field, which could, if they need a bullpen arm, I could see them possibly thinking about moving Curtis Granderson to another team that is in competition for the playoffs to get another bullpen arm. A team with a strong bullpen, maybe like an Orioles type, who do not have a third outfielder. They've been, that's a perfect example because they've been using Michael Bourne 
who is really not too strong anymore, and Trey Mancini, who's a career first baseman in the outfield this season. And a guy like Granderson coming in there would really boost that team. And they've got so many bullpen arms, they can afford to give one to the Mets, and I think that would be a trade that would benefit both of them as they make the push for a 2017 World Series trophy. But Conforto, with that hit, raises his average to 330. Another really strong year and back-to-back -back seasons where there's really not a spot for him on this team. As Noah Syndergaard will be the batter, 421 mark. You wouldn't, it's never a smart decision to tr have him bunch. It's better to let him swing away. And especially with two outs, he will be swinging away. He's gotten a hold on a pair of homers this season. His last one in his last start in Cincinnati. The only run support the Mets got in that start for Noah was a home run by him in the third inning. It was 1-1 when he left the game, and the Mets ended up getting the victory. As Syndergaard lines went up the middle, a base hit. Now going to third. Will Duda try to score? He is. Here comes the throw to the plate from Ellsbury. Cut off by Tanaka. A hesitation move by Duda. A really smart play to fool Ellsbury. And the Mets take a 2-0 lead. Noah Syndergaard produces with the bat again. And the 8-9 and nine slots in the Met order produce with two outs. And they take a 2-0 advantage. And Tanaka really falling to pieces here in the second inning. That ball almost got Tanaka. Syndergaard... Lined up the middle. Syndergaard looks like a hitter in the batter's box. And Duda hesitated at third. I don't think Sherlock waved him home. Duda just decided to try it. And Ellsbury was already thrown to the cutoff man when Duda started breaking from third. So a smart move as Masahiro Tanaka, who only threw, I believe, seven pitches in the first, is already at 17 this inning. And now he's got the top of the med order to worry about with still first and second, two outs, and Reyes the batter. Seeing Syndergaard at the plate is a good sign after he took that liner off his foot. And seeing him run, he looks just fine. He will be out at second here, and that'll retire the side. But four hits and a pair of runs cross the plate. It all started out with a J. Bruce double. Walker drove him in. And the second RBI, Noah Syndergaard drives in another run with the bat. It's fourth ribby of the year. We head to the third inning here on Memorial Day. The Mets leading it 2-0. We'll be back here on WUB Network, America's sports leader. Next week, the USFL returns to WUB Network with another great battle early in the season, and it will be a big battle in the East with the Baton Rouge Crossfire battling the Orlando Sharks from the wide world of sports. You can see it right here on WUB Network. First pitch here is a line drive caught by Lucas Duda by Didi Gregorius, only a 208 mark now, is that first pitch a liner, Syndergaard at 23 pitches, had that rocky first, calmed down in the second, and now Gregorius out, and now something that fans love to see, a career American League pitcher having a bat, Masahiro Tanaka, they have uh, DHs in Japan, as we look at the AL standings, the Yankees in the AL East, two games back of the Orioles. The Rays third, having a strong start to the year. The Blue Jays just behind them, the Red Sox way back. So here's Tanaka. Tanaka has not gotten a victory since his last start in April, which was a really strong one where he went seven innings and allowed just two hits and one run. That was his best start of the year against the Red Sox. 0-1, pardon me, the White Sox, not the Red Sox, 0-1 fouled off 0-2. Now he's trying to do something with the bat, look for his first career major league hit, but he swings and misses, and Syndergaard gets it down quickly on three pitches. The sinker down in the dirt, Tanaka swinging about halfway between the pitcher's mat and home plate. So Tanaka down on three pitches, Syndergaard racks up the K, his second strikeout, second strikeout for Thor. And now two outs back to the top of the order for the Yankees, and that's Jacoby Ellsbury, who reached on an error his first time. It was an awful defensive play by Lucas Duda, a, gra a line drive right to him that he bobbled. It was a really fast line drive, even if he bobbled it once, he would have been able to run to first probably and beat Ellsbury, let alone throw to Syndergaard who was already there, but he bobbled it a couple times and just couldn't pick it up. That play at the start of the game looked like it might be one of those days for the Mets, but boy have they turned it around and Noah Syndergaard has been part of the credit offensively. First pitch to Jacoby Ellsbury, swing and a miss, strike one. 
and Syndergaard getting in a groove, really mixing up those pitches. He's thrown a lot of off-speed stuff. I feel like he's starting to lack confidence in his fastball as it has started to drop in velocity a little this season. It was not like the whole season it's been bad. Back in April, 0-1 fouled off by Ellsbury, Syndergaard ahead 0-2. He was hitting the hundreds, 100-101 easily, but ever since May 1st, that game when he was involved in the bean battle with the Dodgers hitting each other, and he got ejected. Then he came back the next start and got absolutely killed by the Marlins, giving up eight runs in two innings. Syndergaard just doesn't want to use that fastball, and now he's going with, he's becoming a sinker changeup pitcher this season. He's really changed his arsenal the last couple starts. One, two, misses low. That was a fastball, only 97 on the gun for Syndergaard. He tried to go back to that fastball a little bit, then he gave up a couple hits in the last start against Cincinnati. But then he started going crazy with the curveballs, and that's why he walked four batters. He was just crazy in their last start against Cincinnati. 2-2, two -two, outside ball three. The Mets really have put up a fight, and they've had a couple tough series. The Cardinals, they went to St. Louis at Bush Stadium and split the four-game set, and then stunned everybody by taking two of three in Chicago, in Wrigley, before heading to Cincinnati and taking two of three. So overall, when you've got three teams in the playoff hunt and you get a six and four trip against them, that's really a good sign for your team. The Braves, they ended up getting a handle on, t getting the sweep. So they have won four in a row trying to keep up the winning streak here. And now Syndergaard ahead, but it's Syndergaard behind. It's a full count, 3-2 to Ellsbury. He lines one to right, coming in Bruce. He dives and he makes the catch. Jay Bruce goes for a dive, and he gets it in the wet grass as the rain's starting to fall here at City. Beautiful catch, though, by Bruce. So we head to the bottom of the third. Mets still lead it 2-0 here on WUB Network's presentation of Memorial Day Baseball. Here's Ace Dribble Cabrera grounded out his first time to Chase Headley. So as we look at the sky, it is starting to rain. The sky does not look too pretty. I don't think there's many Memorial Day barbecues going on in the tri-state area today without rain being a factor. The lights are on. It's really weird to see the lights on here at only a little before 2 Eastern time here at City Field. A 1 o'clock start today for Memorial Day. One of the interesting things to look at here, also when you've got the Subway Series going on, are how many Yankee fans are in the building. And there are a fair amount of Yankee fans here, probably about 30 to 40 percent. These fans are going to travel. You can hear the Met fans trying to shut down the Yankee fans in their chance. First pitch is a split change in their strike one. Tanaka had that really nice first inning, but then threw almost 20 pitches in the second. He's at 26 pitches right now. Tanaka's issue has been high pitch counts. He's gotten up into triple digits three times this year in the fifth inning. I don't think he'll get there today. 0-1 in there, strike two in the sinker. He just wants to settle down after that rocky second inning. Remember our next game of this doubleheader? It's the Orioles and Nationals, Steven Strasburg and Chris Tillman squaring off in the Beltway battle. 0-2, Cabrera gets a handle on it, flies it to right. Judge coming in makes a nice running catch, and that's the first half. So look at the NLE standings. Mets and Nats tied atop it. The Braves have really been a shocker. They're right at 525 and 25, eight games back. Nine games back are the Phillies and the Marlins, who have just been horrible this year with Don Mattingly on the hot seat, are 16 games out of the race. John Carlos Stanton's had his worst career season. Yelich has struggled. That whole team is, nobody's hitting above 260 in that lineup, which is awful. They're the worst team in baseball this season. First pitch, low ball one. It's close between them and Minnesota, but it's starting to lean towards that the Marlins are a little worse. So Minnesota at least can hit. Their pitching has been atrocious, though. 1-0, Cespedes drives one deep left. Forget about it. Say goodbye to that ball. Yoenis Cespedes had a home run drought of over a week and a half. Salon to that. First home run since two Wednesdays ago at Bush Stadium. Yoenis Cespedes goes yard. Off the facing of the Delta Club and bouncing into the first row of the second deck. What a shot by Yoenis Cespedes, and the Mets lead 3-0.
That was a horrible pitch from Masahiro Tanaka. And up comes the apple for the first time on this Memorial Day. As Yoenis Cespedes goes yard on a horrible pitch right down the middle. And the second that ball was off the bat, you just knew it was gone. Because when, you, when our camera shifted to left field, you could just watch Brett Gardner just stand there and watch it. He barely even moved when that ball went off the bat. And here the celebration. Up comes the apple. Home run number nine for Cespedes. And the Mets lead it 3 0. Wow, that was insane. What a shot. The Mets and the Camo Unis greet him as he reaches the dugout. Yoenis Cespedes with a big shot. And just when it looked like Tanaka might start to get into a groove, Yoenis Cespedes shoots it down. And it's 3 0. And now Tanaka's really, you can tell he's not happy. Gary Sanchez came out to talk. And the interpreter, the Japanese interpreter who also comes out whenever there's a mound conversation between the two, is Jay Bruce. A double and a run scored in his first split appearance. Trickled a double down the right field line, trying to continue the success here with Tanaka getting knocked around. Bruce takes the first pitch in the dirt on the splitter, 1-0. Masahiro, ay ay ay, ERA over seven now. They've been saying there's a good chance that Luis Sessa, when the two were, uh, starters were out, pitched pretty well. A swing and a miss by Bruce, one and one. They'd think about possibly slotting him in and maybe moving Tanaka just for a while into the long relief role, which might be smart just to get some more innings out of that starting pitching, but that might destroy Tanaka's confidence and mess him up for the future. This shot, this one is shot out by Bruce all the way to the warning track and Ellsbury makes the running catch in right center way deep near the bullpen and that's the second out. So Bruce nearly went yard there and now Neil Walker who drove in a run with a single up the middle back in the second comes up with two outs. So look at the teams in the home run category in the National League where they stack up. The Mets are second but the Cubs are Running away with it, 68 homers for the Cubs. Mets are at 58, 54 for the Diamondbacks, 53 the D Rockies, 51 the Dodgers. First pitch to Neil Walker is taking low ball one. Once again, the best team in the National League, not in that category, because the Nationals, their starting pitching is just so strong. The National starters ERA is under 2.8. It's 2.76, which is incredible. 1-0, low for Walker, 2-0. We'll talk more about them when we do that second game later today, which is Orioles, Nats, the teams that both of these teams are chasing in the divisions right now. 2-0, outside ball three, and Walker, we'll see if he gets the green light here. So we take a look in the Yankee pen, and yes, there is some action already. You never want to see the Yankees, any team, having to get to their bullpen so early, but the Yankees chasing Shreve is warming up. Which is really not what they want. But that's what's happening. As Tanaka really struggling. And now he's behind 3-0 on Neil Walker. <laughs> He'll try to adjust here. And Walker grounds one. He did get the green light. Easy play for Castro. Who throws to first and that retires the side. But Yoenna Cespedes goes yard for a deep moon shot to left. We head to the fourth. Nets leading at 3-0 here on WUB Network. America's sports leader. Here's Brett Gardner, 0 for 1 with a flyout, 3.30 average on the year. Syndergaard at 32 pitches through 3, has had solid control and has struck out a couple. And the first pitch to Gardner is a swing and a miss. Fastball, 99. Finally, Syndergaard has a pitch that goes well up there in velocity. The issue that he's had all season with it just trickling downward, 0 and 1. 0 1 to Syndergaard, looped up the middle into center, that's a base hit, and Gardner. Gets a wacky looking single and Gardner's on base, a speedster to lead off the top of the fourth inning. When you talk about Syndergaard, everyone always thinks, what is his innings limit this year? Because the Mets, it is so useful that they've got guys like Robert Gazelman, Lugo when he's healthy. They've also got Josh Smoker, different guys who they can slot into the starting role. Because there are a couple guys that they got to be careful with their innings. Syndergaard, because he got hurt last August, if you remember. 
He needed shoulder surgery and missed the postseason. Zach Wheeler, of course, has been out the last couple years. Harvey just struggling. You got to get him some rest. Matt's has been hurt now, so you got to be careful with him. And then, of course, Jacob DeGrom being the ace, you don't want to overuse him. DeGrom had to carry this team in 2016 to the playoffs with DeGrom and Harvey being the top two arms, Matt's being on and off. Harvey had some struggles, but it was DeGrom and Bartolo Colon mainly with Harvey and Matt's rounding out the rotation. And then when Matt's really took a step back at the end of the year, they decided to take Matt's out of the playoff rotation, and they replaced him with Seth Lugo for a while, and even Gabriel Yanoa, if you remember, started a playoff game when Matt Harvey was had a shoulder pain. So if you look at the Mets' upcoming schedule, after these two games here, they go off to Yankee Stadium. They'll face, it'll be DeGrom and Michael Pineda on Wednesday. That should be a showdown. Then next weekend, they are on the road in Miami. Should be an easy series. Edison Volquez, Adam Conley, Dan Straley, the three projected starters they'll face, and they'll have Cindergaard, Wheeler, and probably Steven Matz. Here's Headley. The rumor is that possibly on Sunday they might bring in another starter like a Gazelman or a Smoker so they can give everyone a little bit of a, breath of a breather. First pitch swing and a miss on a fastball by the three-hitter in the order, Chase Headley, who hit a single his first time and ended up getting caught up in a double play. 0-1 chopped foul to the left, 0-2 the count. Big lead for Gardner. they got to be careful there. 0-2. Hard pitch at 96 from Syndergaard, but it's just a little outside. Rivera stuck his glove out there to keep it from going to the backstop. One and two. One, two pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And that's the first out. Gabe Morales is the home plate umpire's umpire today. Part of Gary Cedarstrom's crew. I believe Cedarstrom was the crew chief when we did the Mariner Blue Jay game, our last MLB presentation. So here's Greg Bird, 0 for 1 so far today. He grounded into that double play in the first inning to eliminate the threat. First pitch, high outside, 1 and 0. Syndergaard does not have good control of that fastball today. He's used, let it be given up a couple hits. I think both of the Yankee hits have been off fastballs today. 1-0. Bird fouls the fastball back, just couldn't time it. That one at 98, 1-1 one one the count. 1-1, one, one, low ball 2 on pitch number 41 of the day for Noah Syndergaard on the sinker. Sinker at 90. It's just amazing, though. Even though his fastball velocity, it's weird. His off-speed pitches are, seem to be picking up velocity. 2-1, swing and a miss, strike 2. Syndergaard looks like a different pitcher out there with the longer hair and, of course, all the muscle he put on this offseason. Two and two, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. So after the leadoff single, Noah Syndergaard fans a pair and out two away with the unreliable over the last couple weeks. Gary Sanchez coming up with Gardner still stranded at first base. So here's Syndergaard now ready to face Gary Sanchez. Sanchez 0 for 1 with the ground out today. Gardner with a big lead off first base. We'll see if he's running. And a grounder by Sanchez to Walker who scoops it up. And for some reason, instead of going to first, he dives in the ground to tag out Gary Sanchez. What the heck was he... To tag out Gardner. What the heck was he thinking? I mean, he got him. But I mean, why is he doing that? He could have easily... Just thrown to first, and Walker could have risked got getting hurt. A very questionable play there as Walker goes diving after him. But he gets the out anyway, and that'll retire the side. So no runs, a hit one left. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Mets in control here on Memorial Day, up 3-0 as the rain begins to pick up here at City Field. We'll be back.
Here's Lucas Duda, 0 for 1, a fielder's choice, and a run scored. 262 mark on the year for Lucas. Tanaka's first pitch. Jason Shreve has sat down after he was warming up earlier. That pitch was number 38 for Tanaka, so his pitch count isn't ridiculous, but he's just given up so many bad hits, and many of them have been off his splitter. Oh, one nearly hits Duda, and Duda is not happy. And he yells something back at Tanaka and gives him quite the stare. One and one. That, I, I think that one just got away from Tanaka, but Duda, whenever it's in that Yankee series, you always got to be careful because you never know what these teams are going to do. And whenever there's guys pitching inside, you never, you never want to do this in a Cindergard start because we all know what happens when Noah Cindergard gets involved in this. I don't know how this ball missed Duda, though. It didn't get him, but it was like millimeters away from just brushing his jersey. It went just under his arms that were stretched out. So Tanaka tries to reset here, the 1-1. One -one. Swing and a miss by Duda upstairs, 1-2. and two, And Duda still does not look too pleased after getting buzzed by Masahiro just a couple pitches ago. Here's the 1-2 pitch. In there, strike three called, and that's the first out. <laughs> So one away, and that will bring up Rene Rivera, the seven hitter. 0 for 1 mark on the day. Tanaka, good to get that strike out there for him, but it's just been a very disappointing season. The Yankees just got to be so relieved because with he and Sabathia both struggling recently, having Severino and Pineda both return, especially Michael Pineda. It's just going to be so great for this team. So Severino comes back tomorrow, I believe, against Zach Wheeler. And then DeGrom Pineda, Game 3. Nats and Adam Warren, Game 4. So Rivera sends a line at a short. Starlin Castro makes the grab, and that's the second out of this bottom of the fourth inning. Team on base percentage in the National League. Mets are on top. Here's some, a category the Nationals are in. They're second at 330 with the Dodgers, D-backs, and Rockies rounding out the top five. Here's Conforto, one for one on the day. He hit that single on the first pitch. A couple first pitch pit hits allowed by Tanaka today. And Conforto does it again. Liner into shallow right. Falling quickly. And that's going to be a base hit for Michael Conforto. <laughs> And now that'll bring up Thor to bat here with a two-out base runner. And the last time that happened, he drove in a run. So Michael Conforto really trying to prove that he deserves to be in the starting lineup. I mean, he's hitting 337. And I know Curtis has hit a lot of home runs this year, but he's been ice cold recently. I think Conforto is going to get shifted into here very soon. Or like I said earlier in the broadcast about possibly using Granderson as trade bait, for a bullpen arm, <clears throat> or maybe just another bat off that bench. Here's Cindergard, and he's going to line one into the right center field gap. Coming over quickly is Ellsbury. Conforto's going to go first to third, throw to the cutoff man. Conforto safe at third. Cindergard with a first pitch hit, seventh hit of the day for the Mets, second for Cindergard, and he's got a 476 mark from the plate this season. Oh my goodness. I think we know who's going to be the NL pitcher getting the silver slugger, especially since Madison Bumgarner still is waiting for his first home run of the season. Noah Syndergaard, jeez. And now runners in the corners, and all of a sudden the Mets have a threat to score again against Masahiro Tanaka with the top of the order and Jose Reyes looming. This is only Reyes' second game back from the disabled list, where he landed back on... May the 13th. Ground out and a fly out for Reyes today, 0 for 2. So far, 1 for 6 since returning from the DL. First pitch, low ball, 1 on the splitter. We have some breaking news about disabled list. The Houston Astros season just keeps getting worse. Jose Altuve, 1 0, swing and a miss by Reyes, has suffered a strained ACL and will be placed in the 15 day DL and will miss at least th four to six weeks. So that is not what they want at all, with Keuchel having that horrible season, and he's not getting any sort of run support. 
the bullpen struggling, even though they have such a strong bullpen. 1-1 one, one outside ball 2, 2-1, two and one, Reyes ahead in the cap. Astros just fall into pieces. I believe they play Arizona this, this week. 2-1 is in their strike 2. So it doesn't get any easier as they face the third best team in the National League. So count is even 2-2, two and two, first and third, two outs. Mets already ahead 3-0 here in the bottom of the fourth. Here comes the 2-2 pitch to Reyes. In there, strike three called, says Gabe Morales. Tanaka gets out of the jam, and he records his second strikeout looking of the inning. His third K overall. Mets get a threat with two outs. Conforto and Syndergaard both single, but they both get stranded. We head to the fifth inning here on WUB Network, America's sports leader. And after four, that's the Mets ahead, 3-0. Here's Starlin Castro, went down swinging his first time up. Still a 361 mark in late May is absolutely incredible for Starlin. Easy favorite for the shortstop in the All-Star game. Although he and Francisco Lindor are very close, Lindor hitting 340 for the Cleveland Indians. Sinker is in their own one. Both those teams currently very safely in the playoffs. 0-1 in there, strike two. Syndergaard really starting to settle down. 46 pitches now here in the fifth inning. He'd love to go as deep as possible. This is really what he looked like back in April. Really a revamped Noah Syndergaard out there. Trying to strike out Castro again. 0-2 just misses the outside corner on the curveball. 1-2 the count. Syndergaard already four strikeouts today. Rivera calls for the pitch. The 1-2 offering. He deals. Upstairs, ball two on the fastball at 97. Syndergaard's got to rely on that sinker and that slider because those are the two pitches that are getting in these punch outs today. We'll see if he turns to it here. Chance to strike Castro out for the second time. 2-2. Two -two. Inside, ball three. So after going ahead easily 0-2, Syndergaard has now gotten... And Castro has fought on to get the count drawn full. Three and two. Syndergaard, the pitch. Grounded foul by Castro, and he battles on. Again, three two pitch. Castro grounds one up the middle to short. Cabrera fields it. Runs, throws, got him, and that is the first out of this fifth inning. Syndergaard looked like he had a chance at the strikeout, but things went the other way. And now order in the court. Aaron Judge, the big boy, the baby bomber, coming to the plate, number 99. Grounded out his first time weekly, dropping his season average to 228. Syndergaard at 51 pitches. Here's number 52 as the rain letting up. Judge fouls it off 0-1. Oh, 0-1 pitch to Judge. Bottoming out splitter, line down to second, Walker bobbles, it throws to first, got him, and that's two away. Judge was really attacking at the plate, just couldn't get the right pitch to drive, and now Didi Gregorius bats. Two homers in the year, 20 ribbies in total, flew out his first time into shallow right. There was a liner to Duda. First pitch. Gregorius socks one foul off to the right side. Looked very similar to that first pitch he hit 0-1. Thor looks in. The 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Change up fools Gregorius and now Syndergaard ahead 0-2. Just 55 pitches in the fifth inning and he has shut down the Yankees holding them to just two hits so far. The 0-2 pitch. In there, strike three call. Down goes D.D. Gregorius. Another strikeout for Syndergaard. He's racked up five through five innings. He is shutting down the Yankees here on Memorial Day. We are halfway through here on WUB Network, America's sports leader. It's the Mets leading it three to nothing over the Yankees. We'll be back. Welcome back to Memorial Day Baseball right here on WUB Network, America's Sports Leader. The Yankees and Mets squaring off a Subway Series showdown here. Rain coming down here at City Field. We just hope we can continue to get this game through. We're in the bottom of the fifth, three to nothing, the Mets lead. Masahiro Tanaka still in there. Aside from the couple 
big hits, and of course that blast he gave up earlier in the game to Johannes Cespedes. Bruce's looked per I mean, Tanaka's looked pretty solid out there. Facing the heart of the order, though, with Asdrubal Cabrera, Johannes Cespedes, and Jay Bruce here in the bottom of the fifth. 0 for 2 so far for Asdrubal Cabrera. 51st pitch of the day for Masahiro Tanaka is outside ball one. Tanaka wants to just get into a groove as Syndergaard starts to tire out there after five innings. The Mets' bullpen has not been the most reliable in baseball, so the Yankees would have a good chance of getting to them. 1-0 pitch. Cabrera loops one into right center. That'll fall in front of Aaron Judge for a base hit. Hit number eight on the day for the Mets. First of the day for Asdrubal, and the Mets have the leadoff man on here in the fifth. Now here's Yoenis Cespedes. You can hear some chants. Cespit is coming up. Homer his last time has also struck out in his two plate appearances against Masahiro Tanaka today. Cabrera solid lead off first. First pitch to Cespit is cracked again. This one to left. That'll fall in front of Gardner for a base hit. Back to back singles to kick off the fifth here for the Mets. And they got first and second and nobody out with the big man Jace Bruce, Jay Bruce coming up here with a chance to drive in some runs. So Tanaka really starting to struggle out here. As Jay Bruce, a double and a fly out so far today for Jay. And the first pitch to him is in there on the outside part of the zone. Nice pitch and the split change from Masahiro Tanaka. 0-1 oh the count. Tanaka's 0-1. Oh Paints the outside part of the plate again, trying to stay away from... Bruce's zone, which is the inside part of the plate. 0 and 2. Sanchez the sign. The 0 2 pitch. Outside ball one. We'll see what comes here next. After Bruce, it's Neil Walker, so it doesn't get much easier for Masahiro. 1 2 pitch. Bruce drives one, shallow left, coming in Gardner, will he make the play? Yes, the running catch, back to second, just barely is as Dribble Cabrera. Nice throw by Gardner, Gregorius put down the tag, just not in time. It's now Neil Walker will bat. It's Tanaka now at 57 pitches, and we take a look in the Yankee pen. There is some action right now. Not quite sure who that is, I believe it's Jason Shreve. Anyway, now one out, two on, and that'll bring up Neil Walker, the five hitter in the net order. One for two, an RBI, a ground out in the day. Last 12 games, a 342 mark for Neil. Takes the first pitch inside, ball one from Tanaka. Remember, we got more. Orioles, Nats, the Memorial Day excitement continues. 1 0 to Neil Walker. Outside, ball two, back to back. Not really good pitches from Tanaka. 2 0 the count. 2 0. In there, strike one. Nice movement on the sinker to get it up there. And Walker just absolutely froze on that pitch. Did not think it would be right down the heart of the plate. 2 1 to Neal. He cracks one to shallow right center. Who's going to get it? Judge calls off Ellsbury. He'll make the catch for the second out. Cespedes and Cabrera both back to their respective bases successfully. And that's going to be it for Masahiro Tanaka. Joe Girardi coming out. Tyler Clippard, former Met pitcher, will be coming into the game. This pitching change brought to you by the Motorsports Guy. We'll be back. So Tanaka, so far today, four and two-thirds. It looked like four and two-thirds, nine hits, three earned. It's interesting after he got into a groove, and now that he's, out, that he's out of the game, it appears they're looking at him in the dugout. They're looking at his leg, and they're having him stretch. So I don't know. Did he feel like he might have pulled a muscle? And that's why Gir Girardi might have cut the cord on his day. But anyway, Tanaka, once again a struggle, gave up yet another home run. Was only able to manufacture three strikeouts. Did drop the ERA down to 6.8 from 6.91 at the beginning of the day. Mets still have two on, two out. Tyler Clippard on the team in 2015 when they went to the World Series. Facing Lucas Duda, first pitch two-seamer in there, strike one. 
Seems Tyler Clippard has played in almost every game for the Yankees this year. He's one of the guys they turn to seemingly every day. Already 21 appearances in their first 50 games. Was an all-star back in the day when he was with the Nationals. Was a starter when he first came up. And when he first came up, he was with the Yankees. Made six starts in 2007. 0 and 1, cracked foul by Duda. So quickly ahead, 0-2 is is Clippard. 0-2, low and outside in the dirt. Gary Sanchez did not like that pitch from Clippard. He had spotted it in the upper part of the zone, and Clippard missed badly. One and two. Again, here he comes. Come set one two offering. Hits Duda on the back, and Duda is shaken up. And Duda's in some pain. And Duda's coming out of the game. So two injuries and as many batters. And now Lucas Duda has been drilled. And that is surely not what the Mets wanted to see. Duda gets drilled with the pitch. Oh, man. Wow. Definitely not what you wanted to see as a Mets fan. Big blow if you lose Lucas's bat. Because he has had a strong year and has really been coming into it the last couple weeks. Hoping it's just, just a bad bruise, but he went down in some pain and he got off the field. So now both Tanaka and Duda have both gotten shaken up in these in the last two batters, and now Rene Rivera bats with the bases loaded, Wilmer Flores pitch runner for Duda, as Rivera fans and misses at the two-seamer 0-1. Rivera hit a grand slam a couple weeks ago in St. Louis, one of only two home runs on the year for the Met catcher. 0-1 to Rivera, takes one lower part of the zone, gets the call from the home plate umpire, 0-2 Gabe Morales, the home plate umpire. Cabrera third, Cespedes second, Flores first, two outs, 0-2 to Rivera, swing and a miss on top of that ball. Tyler Clipper gets out of a major jam. Tanaka leaves in trouble with an apparent leg injury. Clippard with two on, hits Duda. Duda leaves with a back injury, but he pitches out of the bases loaded jam. We head to the sixth, and that's up 3-0 here on WUB Network, America's sports leader. Welcome back. Tyler Clippard will bat Yankees. Not many relievers available. Syndergaard will face Tyler Clippard, who is going to ground the first pitch hard to second. Solid contact for a reliever. Walker will throw him out easily, though. That's the first out. Wilmer Flores has remained in the game at first base. Just definitely not what the Mets wanted to see. But these, with his injury to Duda and the Yankees, the same with Masahiro Tanaka being lost. So one out here in the top of the sixth, and the next man up. It's going to be a pinch hitter, Jacoby Ellsbury, who has not been as hot as he would have wished at this, over the last couple weeks. 0 for 2 today, he did reach on an error by Duda. Matt Holliday will pinch hit. Holliday's had a strong year in his first year with the Yankees after being with the Cardinals since 2009. Colorado and Oakland in his career. So far, six homers and a 331 mark in 44 games. Usually the DH for the Yankees. We'll see what kind of success he has here against Syndergaard. Syndergaard at 57 pitches. And now the first pitch from Noah to Holiday is cracked down to short, dived by Cabrera. Throws down to first, he got him! Stellar defensive play by his dribble Cabrera to Rob Holiday of a rolling base hit. Cabrera with a nice play, threw from his knees, and even though he's aging into his 30s, as dribble Cabrera looks just as solid defensively as he was when he first came up with the Indians. Now Brett Gardner all bat. 357 over the past month is a solid mark. Both these teams have such high batting averages. Both lead their leagues in that category. First pitch is a changeup that drops in there for a strike 0-1. 
Cinder Godzilla 1 2 Gardner is looped over the glove of Cabrera. He bats it down. And Gardner is going to be on first with, which, with what will be charged as an error number seven on the year for Ez Dribble. So just after he made a very nice defensive play, that one not nearly as nice. And cindergard has got a speedy two-out base runner to worry about with Chase Headley in the heart of the order up. Definitely not what Syndergaard wanted to worry about. As Chase Headley comes up one for two, a strikeout today for the Yankees' number three hitter. Usually Matt Holiday the three hitter, Headley the four. And Headley crushes one, deep left center. Say goodbye to that ball. Off the facing of the second deck, Chase Headley goes yard. And just like that, it's a one run ball game. Noah Syndergaard does not like seeing that. Chase Headley goes yard. And the switch hitting third baseman cuts this to a one run game. It's three to two. High fives all around for the Yankee third baseman. And now Greg Bird will bat, and he'd hope to tie the game here against a struggling Syndergaard as the Mets get some action going in that bullpen. It's Hansel Robles now stretching. Both Hansel Robles and Fernando Salas both warming up. We'll see if Syndergaard can get back under control here as he faces Greg Bird, the cleanup hitter in the Yank order. First pitch in there on the sinker, strike one. So Syndergaard, very frustrating for the Mets, giving up that homer. Syndergaard had been so strong today, really starting to come into himself after a couple bad starts, and that one really put a damper in things. I mean, overall, it's a good day for Noah. 0-1, oh, foul back 0-2. He just needs a win to get his confidence up. Because Syndergaard overall victory wise, he is four and two, but all four of those victories came before May the fifth of May. Now the 0-2 to Bird fouled back off the the back brick wall, still 0-2, and, and he fights on. Syndergaard looking for another K. It would be his sixth of the day. Can he get it? 0-2 to Bird. The pitch. Swing and a miss on the changeup. Syndergaard gets the third out there as we'll head to the bottom of the sixth. Yankees inch closer, a two-run bomb from Chase Headley. And the Mets now just lead 3-2 to two with the bottom of the order due up. Like we said, up comes Michael Conforto batting against Tyler Clippard in his second inning of work. As our, we have some injury reports, Masahiro Tanaka, they're saying a possible strain of an ACL in the leg on that last pitch he threw, that he was in some pain, and that apparently he had some leg pain going into the start. Duda, on the other hand, they're, all they're saying is a lower back contusion, so not much to know there. Michael Conforto batting, 2 for 2 on the day for the 8 hitter, and he fouls off the first pitch 0-1. Clippard working quickly, 0-1 curveball, low inside, count is even 1-1. One one. Robles and Salas both up in the Met pen. 1-1 one, one outside ball 2. Right now, Noah Syndergaard is looking to bat, he's in the on-deck circle. 2-1 from Clippard to Conforto in their strike 2. But you know, with Syndergaard, you may not want to bring in a pinch hitter. I mean, he's hitting 476 this year. I mean, it's just incredible the way this man is playing at the bat. 10 for 21 now this season. Another hit will be at 500. 2-2 two and two the count. Pitch to Conforto from Clipper. Conforto crushes one. Dead center field. Looking up at the wall. Say goodbye to that ball. Michael Conforto gives the Mets advantage, his fourth bomb of the year, trying to seal himself up a spot in the starting lineup, and the Mets take a 4-2 lead. Happy Memorial Day, Michael Conforto, 3-for-3, three three, a couple singles and a long bomb, and that gives the Mets a little more room to maneuver. They now lead by two in the sixth inning. What a shot by Conforto. Dead center, they're saying 436 the distance as it hit near the apple. 
What a shot by Conforto. And now it's 4-2. to two, And Noah Syndergaard will bat 2-for-2 two two today with an RBI single. And he has a pair of long bombs himself this season. And Syndergaard grabs one up the middle. Past the diamond, D.D. Gregorius, and into center field. Syndergaard 3-for-3, three three, and he's hitting 500 on the season. Wow. And now the Mets have a runner at first base, and Jose Reyes the batter. Over the last 10 games, the Mets have dominated the National League in team offense. They have 63 runs over their last 10, just ahead of the Braves and the Cubs, who each have 55 in the span. Here's Jose Reyes, who has struggled 0-for-3 today. He grounds one off to the right side. That's a base hit. Syndergaard stops at second. Reyes in with a single. Hit number 12 of the day for the Mets. And Tyler Clippard really starting to struggle out there. That's three straight hits to start the sixth inning. This is not really a spot Clippard usually comes in in. He's usually seventh inning when they've got the lead. Or eighth inning when they're trailing or if Batanzas or Chapman are unavailable. And right now, still no action in the Bronx Bomber pen. Here's his Dribble Cabrera, one for three today. He had a single in the last inning. He's going to hit one to right field, but room for Judge to go over and make the catch, and that's the first out. And now we'll see if Clippard can work out of this jam that he's manifested himself into. Already a run home in the inning on the bomb by Conforto. Back-to-back -back singles by Syndergaard and Reyes, and then he got the out to Cabrera. Now he's got to face Cespedes, who homered off of Masahiro Tanaka earlier in this game, back in the third inning. And the pitching coach will come out for a slight conversation with Clippard. Yankees just want to calm him down. Clippard already at 15 pitches. First pitch to Cespedes. Swing and a miss, two seamer, 0 and 1. It appears there is action in the Yankee pen. They don't have many people available today. But currently, Adam Warren, everyday Adam Warren, who they're talking about, bullpen, long reliever, he's closed a game this year. Pretty much every pitching role, he's warming up. As the 0-1 in their fastball paints the high outside part of the plate, 0-2. 0-2 pitch. 0-2. And then the hand, Cespedes pops it up right center. Aaron Judge coming over. He'll put order to this court and make the catch, and that's the second out. Back to first and second go Syndergaard and Reyes, respectively. Now Jay Bruce will bat. They're through two-thirds of the tough med order with runners on. As the Yankees' upcoming schedule, after these two with the Mets, this weekend they play host to the Red Sox, whom they haven't faced since the opening series of the season. They have not played them since April. They, the way their schedule is, they do not go to Fenway till two weeks from now, like June 12th, which is really weird. First pitch, circle change, high inside, 1-0 and up to Jay Bruce. 1-0. Clippard misses low on the fastball. 2-0 the count. Syndergaard at second. Reyes at first. 2-0 to Bruce. Circle change misses outside. And now it's a 3-0. The 3-0 pitch. Needs a fastball. He gets it, but it's driven deep. And that's going to bounce in right center all the way to the wall. Syndergaard scores. Reyes right behind him. The throw to the plate by Gregorius is close, but no cigar. A two-run, two-out double from Jay Bruce. And the Mets take a 6-2 to two advantage, and Tyler Clippard is coming out. An absolutely terrible inning here for Tyler Clippard. And now with Neil Walker coming up, the Yankees will make the move and send Adam Warren in. So after Tanaka left with that injury... It's a one inning, four hits, three runs, three earned, and a strikeout, and a home run given up by Clippard. And now here's Adam Warren, who has not had that too incredible of a year. First pitch misses outside, ball one. The path of Adam Warren has been very interesting. Bred by the Yankees.
came up with the Yankees, then got traded for Aroldis Chapman last July, and now is back this year. Yankees just don't want to get rid of him, I guess. Swing and a miss by Walker count is even 1-1. One and one. Wilmer Flores would take hacks for the first time today. He's on deck. 1-1 one, one outside ball two. We did not mention it. Matt Holliday is in right now, if you were wondering, at center field. They have him playing center after they pinch hit him for Ellsbury. 2-1 popped up first baseline. Greg Bird going over. He'll make the catch that retires the side, but not before the Mets jump out big. Three runs in the inning, a home run from Conforto, two-run double from Bruce. We head to the seventh here on Memorial Day. Mets up 6-2. to two. We'll be back. Noah Syndergaard in right now at 65 pitches facing Gary Sanchez first. First pitch to Gary, line down the third base line, foul, 0-1. And one the offering comes. Sanchez fouls one off. 0 oh, and 2 the count now. Syndergaard trying to get strikeout number seven. Still action from Robles and Salas in the Met pen if they need to go there. 0-2 oh, misses low. 1 and 2. You know, now that they've got this four-run lead, this may give them the opportunity maybe to start warming up a Robert Gazelman or a Smoker one of their long men, and not worry about wasting the back end of that pen that has been really overused. Swing and a miss by Sanchez on 1-2 on the sinker outside at 87. Cindergaard still at solid velocity, even though he's at 69 pitches. Seven strikeouts for Thor, and that's the first out of this top of the seventh inning. As now Starlin Castro, the major league leader, leader in batting average, is dropping today. 0 for 2 with strikeout and a ground out, trying to avoid an 0 for against Noah Cindergaard. First pitch comes... Bouncer back to the plate. Cindergaard handles it, throws to first, throws it away down the right field line. Castro to second, and he'll stop there. And now the Yankees have a one out base runner at second with order in the court. Aaron Judge coming to the plate. So just when it was looking good for the Mets, an error by Noah Cindergaard, their third error of the day, first career error for Noah Cindergaard. And trouble here with Aaron Judge coming to the plate. And Judge is going to merit the intentional walk. Judge gets the walk as he'll get to go down first base, earning a lot of respect as a young kid here for the Bombers. A baby Bomber goes to first. And Didi Gregorius will bat with first and second and one out. Didi's 0 for 2, a strikeout and a flyout today. And now he blasts one. Right center field going back. And it's going to be caught near the warning track. Trying to go to third is Castro. They're going to let him go there. Nice catch by Conforto. I don't know. That was really close with him tagging. But going to third there was Didi Gregorius. And now the Yankees have a decision to make. And it appears they will go to a pinch hitter, even though Adam Warren is up. They don't really have many relief options today. But it appears that Dellen Batanzas is up. And the pinch hitter will be Ronnie Torres. Torres, the youngster, three home runs this season. Has had a pretty good year. They've actually been using him as a starter on occasion. At third base, second base, both those positions he's gotten some time at. Runners on the corners, two away. No runs home this inning. 6-2 the Mets lead. Swing and a miss on the first pitch. Syndergaard blows up 97 mile an hour heater past him. 0-1 oh, to number 71, Ronnie Torres. Syndergaard looks in. The sign from Rivera. The 0-1 oh, pitch. Low, ball one. Count is even 1-1. One one. Sinker missed pretty badly. One one pitch. Syndergaard. Got it in on the hands, pop up center field, Conforto coming in. Who's going to get there? It's going to be Cespedes who calls him off and makes the catch in shallow left center. And that retires the side. Stretch time. Syndergaard works out of the, out of the jam. Yankees strand two. We head to the bottom of the seventh. 
Mets leading 6-2. to two. We'll be back. Here we go, bottom of the seventh. Wilmer Flores getting his first plate appearance after coming in for uh, Lucas Duda after he got hit in the pitch with a hit in the back with a pitch from Tyler Clifford back in the fifth inning. As Mitchell Boggs is in the game for the Yankees, he's their fourth pitcher of the day. Mitchell Boggs so far this season, the veteran, the 33-year-old veteran. 16 games, he spent some time in AAA, now he's in the majors. 2-2, two 2-5-7 two, two, ERA. Has surrendered three home runs. You would not want to do that here, facing Wilmer first. Wilmer takes the pitch inside ball one. It's becoming less and less of a platoon between Flores and Duda. At the beginning of the year, Duda was going to play first base against righties, Flores against lefties. But Flores has struggled, and Duda has done much better, meriting Duda much more playing time, and Flores has been limited to just, I believe, 10 starts this season. But if Duda has to miss a few days after getting hurt today, Flores' time to shine will come once again. 2-0, swing and a miss. Boggs blows a 96-mile-an-hour pitch past him, 2-1. Our Cholula flamethrower tracker, hardest pitch we've seen, 97 from Tyler Clippard, 99 from Noah Syndergaard for each team. 2-1, nice off-speed pitch, the slider in there, Flores took it, count is even 2-2. Two and two. Flores, Rene Rivera, and Conforto, 6-7-8 hitters for the Mets. The 2-2 pitch, Flores fans and misses at a nice moving two-seam fastball, and that's the first out of this bottom of the seventh inning. So one out, and here's Rene Rivera. 0 for 3, a strikeout, and a pair of flyouts to the Met catcher, dropping his season average to 155. You really gotta wonder if you're the Mets, swinging a miss by Rivera 0 and 1. Since Darno's been hitting so well, is Rivera's defense that worthy of him being in the lineup? Because he is becoming an automatic out. Ever since he had that grand slam against the Cardinals, then he had a three hit game the next day. He's been doing absolutely terrible. Has hit only 050 since then. He does draw the ball on the slider. Count is even one and one. Yankees really a piecemeal in that bullpen. They'd really hope just to get this game over with. 1-1 one, one fouled off. But it's really a problem. They might have to bring up another arm for tomorrow because the next couple days they've got pitchers in their first games back from injuries with Pineda and Severino and you really don't want to have to waste bullpen arms especially if they're so tired 1-2 low ball 2 the two guys who have not gotten a lot of rest a lot of work in recently have been Aroldis Chapman and Dellen Batantis but really do you want to switch them out of their roles because that's when they've both been proven to struggle when Chapman's been brought in the 8th inning before in playoff games, but Tanzas is an 8th or ninth inning guy. As Rivera takes the 2-2, two, -two, two seamer in there, strike 3, Rivera down looking, and that's the second out, and now Michael Conforto will bat, 3-for-3, three three, a home run off of Tyler Clipper this last time up. So remember next, it's the Beltway battle, the Nats and the Orioles, the teams leading the divisions that the Yankees and Mets trail ever so closely in. Should be a good one. Chris Tillman on the hill against Max Scherzer. That should be a good one. Here's the first pitch to Conforto. He takes one outside ball one. Conforto's season average up to 344, but he has lacked the chance to play it being an everyday starter. 1 up. Swing and a miss by MC. A count is even 1 and 1. Conforto got hurt last season. He had this incredible start, had 16 home runs in mid-June, but then 1-1, one, one, low ball two, was towards the top of the All-Star voting when he got hurt. And he pulled his quad and missed six weeks. And when he came back, he just wasn't the same player. 2-1, outside ball three. Though he did have two playoff home runs, two big ones when they were trailing in games that gave them the lead. The wild card game and then in game three against the Cubs. 3 1. 
This one fouled off by Conforto, and the count is full. Boggs already 16 pitches this inning. Yankees just, he'll probably just get this inning. And then they might have to go to Patanzas maybe in the eighth. 3-2, high ball four, and Conforto draws the walk. And now the Mets have a decision to make. But it looks like Thor is coming up to bat, which would mean he will start the eighth inning. Still have time to make a decision. As Mitchell Boggs is coming out, Dylan Batanzas is coming in. So Boggs done after three batters. And they're going to have Syndergaard bat. Still action in the Met pen. As Syndergaard bats three for three today for Thor. And he swings and misses. Fooled by Batanzas' sinker 0-1. Dylan this season, it's actually been a struggle. It's not been his best year. An ERA over four, a 4.15, two and two record, does have 25 strikeouts, but 16 runs total this season in 24 outings, not what they want. Three for seven in save opportunities, which pretty much proves it's a rollless or no victory when they're winning by less than three in the ninth inning. 0-1 to Syndergaard, swing and a miss again. It's that nasty sinker twice in a row from Dellen. 0-2. Syndergaard looking for a four-hit day. 0-2 to Noah. Swing and a miss, down he goes. But still an impressive day at the plate for Syndergaard. Three for four for the Met pitcher. It looks like he'll go back to work for the eighth inning facing the top of the Yankee order. 6-2 to two, the Mets lead. Can he hold off the Bronx Bombers? We'll be back. Here's Matt Holliday. Has never been a great hitter against the Mets until recent years with the Cardinals. Let's see if he can turn it around today. First pitch from Syndergaard to Holiday is a fastball in there, strike one. Just 79 pitches for Syndergaard as we kick off the eighth inning. And Robles and Salas have both sat down. Addison Reed now the one warming up. I don't know. If this was my opinion, I would not use Reed or Familia today unless it gets the three runs. <clears throat> They've been overused as is and have both had their fair share of struggles. Oh, one grounded weakly to Cabrera. He fields it, throws it away, and Holiday's going to get a chance to run to second. Flores guns it down. Holiday safe. Another error from Asdrubal Cabrera. Fourth of the day for the Mets. Third in the last three innings. So you look at the pitching staffs who have led the National League in strikeouts this year. It's shocking that the Marlins, the worst team in baseball, actually lead with 398. Mets right behind them at 396. Then Rockies, Cubs, and Cards round out the top five. So here is... Brett Gardner, first pitch looped down the third base line, caught by Reyes, out number one. Exactly what Thor wanted. And now Chase Headley, who hit a two-run absolute missile into the second deck his last time, bats against Syndergaard. First pitch from Thor to Headley, grounded down to second. Walker fields it cleanly, throws to Flores, and he got him two outs, and Syndergaard working quickly at 82 pitches. They had Reed up, now they'll sit him down as Familia, the man working. First pitch now to the cleanup man, Greg Bird, is fouled off to the right 0-1. This inning going ridiculously fast and Syndergaard working very quickly. The sign from Rivera, the nod from Syndergaard. The 0-1 pitch is in there, strike two fastball, but you can see the velocity just 93 on that heater. Very uncharacteristic for Noah, 0-2. 0-2 pitch. Curveball in there, called strike three. Syndergaard with eight solid innings, his first really good start in a while. Just three hits allowed and two unearned runs. Eight strikeouts and a walk. It's probably it for him, but Syndergaard goes deep into this one, and the Mets lead 6-2 to two here on Memorial Day. We'll be back. Bottom half, eighth inning, top of the order up here for the Mets. Jose Reyes batting first, singled his last time, one for four on the day. But Tanzas in for his second inning of work. But Tanzas wants to work his nasty stuff. This one popped up down the right field line. Aaron Judge coming in. 
makes the catch out number one. It's almost incomfortable to think that it's possible that the Yankees had a bullpen of not only Batanzas and Chapman, but Andrew Miller too, all at one time as the seven, eight, and nine. The DMC, as they called it, that was just amazing how great that was. First pitch to as Dribble Cabrera's line to right, that's a single. And that's now no, hit number 14 for the Mets today. Cabrera's second. And now Cespedes bats. Has that homer, two for four. But Tance is going to pitch him carefully. Sanchez the sign. This one nubbed down to third. Headley feels it for one. Gregorius down to first. Double play. It's a three-pitch eighth inning for Batanzas. Doesn't get the strikeouts up, but he works that inning quickly. We head to the ninth as the Mets look to prevail and keep the victory. Six to two, they lead. We'll be back. Gary Sanchez, and they're going to leave Syndergaard in for now to face Gary Sanchez. Syndergaard at 85 pitches working here in the ninth. Sanchez dribbles the first one, just foul down the left field line. We've had one complete game. Actually, we've had two complete games here on WUB Network so far. We had, of course, the no-hitter by Matt Latos, and also on opening day, if you remember, technically there were two. Clayton Kershaw got all nine innings. Madison Bumgarner pitched eight and a third, and he gave up a walk-off in the bottom of the ninth, an RBI double walk-off fashion for Yasiel Puig. Syndergaard's 0-1 to Gary Sanchez is driven right center field. It's a gapper. Sanchez rounding first. He's heading to second where he'll stop. But he overshoots second base and just barely gets back to the bag. And that's going to do it for Noah Syndergaard. Out comes Terry Collins. But a job well done for the Mets star pitcher. The ace is done. After eight plus a fantastic baseball. And Jerry Smelia comes in to finish it off. First pitch by Starlin Castro. Fouled back behind the screen 0 and 1. Rene Rivera gets his chase. No room. 0 and 1, the pitch to Starlin Castro. Is dribbled down to shortstop Cabrera going back to second. Is Sanchez throw to first. Flores steps on first and just barely beats Castro. And that's the first out. And now the judge will bat, and we'll see if he merits his second intentional walk in his many plate appearances. No, Familia's going to pitch to him. Judge burns him. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does, because Jay Bruce drops the ball. Throw down home, a great throw by Bruce. But the fifth error for Mets fielders today. Oh, my. Bruce... With his fourth error of the year, Duda had that one earlier in the game. Cabrera's got two, and Syndergaard's got one. Nets with five errors today, and the Yankees have runners on the corners, and all of a sudden the tying run on deck. And now, Familia's going to have to be a little more careful out there. The Mets did already make a defensive change this inning. They brought in Curtis Granderson for Conforto in center, and now it appears they are making another switch. Granderson is shifting to right field. Terry was not happy that Jay Bruce dropped that ball. So Lagaris is going to come into center, and Granderson moves from center to right. Cespedes is still in left. And, of course, Flores came in for the injured Duda. So the Mets just have Darno and TJ Rivera on their bench. The Yankees have only used a pair off their bench. They've used Matt Holliday and Ronnie Torres. They still have uh, Andrew Romine, Chris Carter, and one more, as you see Lagares coming in. Just check quickly on who that other player is that they still have available. And that's Aaron Hicks, who did not start today. Familia with one out facing Didi Gregorius with runners in the corners, trying to prevail and keep give Syndergaard his fifth victory of the year. First pitch fastball in there, strike one. Owen won the cap. A one from Familia. Swing and a miss by Gregorius, and Familia is now four strikes away from the victory. 0 
and two to Gregorius. Nubbed foul down the left side, still 0-2. Sanchez holding tight at third, Judge doing the same at first. 0-2. Gregorius fends and misses at the two-seamer, two away, and the Yankees are down to their last out. And now it's the pitcher spot, and we'll see which pinch hitter they bring in. We'll see who's going to come in for Batanzas. And it appears that Aaron Hicks is their man. Hicks, 286 on the year, second year with the Yankees, coming over from Minnesota. He was a hot prospect, but so many outfielders between Kepler and Robbie Grossman and Buxton and Eddie Rosario, there was just no room for him in that rotation. First pitch foul back 0-1. And that's playing deep in the outfield which has risks, oh, one swing and a miss off the padding of Rene Rivera, 0-2. Oh, and, and they're down to their final strike. A great presentation of Memorial Day baseball. 0-2 oh, pitch. Hicks grounds one down to short. Cabrera plays it on a hop, throws to first. Ball game over. The New York Mets get the victory here on Memorial Day, having success on a great American holiday as they win it 6-2. A solid outing from everybody. Noah Syndergaard helped to lead the action for the New York Mets. A strong day overall for Thor, and the Mets get the victory. Syndergaard with eight strong innings out of that bullpen, and the Mets get the victory 6-2. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of baseball on WUB Network. I'm Eddie Kalecki. We'll see you next time.